The FBI appears to be investigating an alleged investment scam involving the former owner of the famous Tipitina's Music Club. Roland von Kernatowski sold the club last year while facing a series of lawsuits by people who allege he had bilked them out of millions of dollars. Tonight, those investors and von Kernatowski himself speak exclusively with eyewitness investigator David Hammer. Mary Lynn Pendarvis was gregarious and full of life until she got sick about five years ago. She is suffering from dementia. Her husband Louis's school teacher pension and Social Security wasn't enough to pay for in-home caretakers. To fill the gap, Pendarvis was counting on investments he'd made with this man, Roland von Kernatowski. He had a reputation of King Midas. <laughs> if I can use that expression. When Pendarvis met him in 1994, everything Von Kernatowski touched did seem to turn to gold. And so Pendarvis gave Von Kernatowski $15,000 to buy and sell U.S. Treasury bond contracts in an investment called Bond Fund One. Bond Fund One did so well, Pendarvis kept contributing regularly, and his total investment of $165,000 grew into approximately $570,000. Treasury bonds are known as safe investments that are easily turned into cash. To pay for his wife's care, Pendarvis took regular distributions of two and three thousand dollars a month, and still the fund kept growing. But when Pendarvis asked Von Kernatowski to send him all his money in late 2017, he made three payments, and then that was the end. Three payments of just eleven thousand dollars each. Did you ever have a license to trade U.S. Treasury bonds? No. In some records, Von Kernatowski claimed Bond Fund One was trading treasury bonds. In others, he said he was buying and selling treasury bond contracts and security derivatives, trading regulated by the federal government. Securities attorney Tom yeah. Potter yeah. said yeah. either way, yeah. Von Kernatowski yeah. escaped the required yeah. oversight. He should have been subject to registration and oversight under any of several different variations of this. Penn Darvis and a half dozen other investors are now suing Von Kernatowski. And several investors tell Eyewitness News they've been questioned by the FBI about Von Kernatowski. And I just want to say that they did call me in, um, and I know they've spoken to a couple of other people um, about what's been going on and what I knew about his operation, why I got into it, what I had been told, and what, I, what had been written down and sent to me. So how did we get here? To understand that, we must look at who Rowan Von Kernatowski is. He's a real estate developer best known in New Orleans for owning the famed Tipitina's Music Club until he sold it last November to the funk band Galactic. In the beginning, for many years, we didn't run it expecting to make any money. He made his money fixing up distressed, abandoned properties like the old Sears building in Shreveport, the Orpheum Theater in New Orleans, and now the old casino pavilion next to Lake Pontchartrain's South Shore Harbor. We like it. We like, we like the, the results. We like the challenge. Von Kernatowski says he changed his investment plan from low-risk government bonds to financing his real estate projects, starting in 1996 when he created a company called BFI LLC. Were all of your investors made aware of the change in mission for Bond Fund 1 to BFI? As far as I'm concerned, they were. I've never been informed about about Bond Fund One, any money going into his real estate projects, never. Penn Darvis's daughter Paula joined the fund in 2004, signing a document stating that the purpose of BFI is to engage in the trading of U.S. Treasury bonds. That's eight years after Von Kernatowski says he started using BFI for real estate. I believe that they just got this by mistake as opposed to the currently current operational one. I mean, we. You see what I'm saying? Roland handed me that document in 2004, and he went over it line by line by line, explaining his daily trading of U.S. Treasury bonds and what a great investment it was and how safe it was. And he signed it right there. He and I both signed it right there with my dad in the room as a witness. Vincent and Val Speer invested in BFI in 2002. Their contract also says it was for trading Treasury bonds. Their daughter, Yvonne Perrette, followed in 2008. Six years later, there was no mention that this was being used for real estate. Her father died in 2010, and her mother is 89 now. Now, the fact that he's got 
I don't know if I should mention them, $383,000 of her money. That's all she has. Von Kernatowski says he understands some of his investors have hardships, but asks for their patience. For me to now not care would be out of the question. Yeah. Of course I care. The question is, can I do it? And why can't I? Right, that is the question. Investor statements from 2018 show BFI with more than $13 million. So then why is it hard to pay them now if they want to cash out? What's the deterrent? Well, because those funds are in projects still. But Pendarvis and the others say that's not what they agreed to. I don't know how where he's going to get it from, but he, if he gets it out of his own pocket, that's fine with me as long as I get my money so that I can take care of my wife as long as she's here. David Hammer, Eyewitness News. A spokesperson for the FBI New Orleans field office said he could not confirm or deny the existence of an investigation.